We're at a stage in the development of quantum technology where there are very different platforms that have very different strengths and weaknesses and capabilities. And there's a need to define benchmarks and metrics to be able to compare both progress within a given technology and also to do fair comparisons between technology that are in a, that are in a uh, technology neutral way and don't play to the strengths of a given um, platform. Uh, one very obvious uh, metric that everyone can understand is the number of qubits. Uh, but there's, uh, in addition to that, there's the uh, number of operations that you can do before a, a system is affected by decoherence and noise and becomes completely uh, uh, unusable. Uh, and within that, there's the um, power of each of those operations that you can do. And in order to fairly compare uh, between uh, technologies, We've uh, defined uh, something we're calling an effective error rate, which is defined in terms of technology neutral metric. It's, uh, it's a benchmark that's not optimized to any particular hardware platform. And we take this, uh, this effective error rate, and uh, we also take the, uh, the number of qubits. And those are the, the two most important um, benchmarks. But if you would like to have a single number to summarize the capability of a platform, we, we define something we're calling the quantum volume, which is basically the product of the number of operations you can do before decoherence happens and the number of qubits. And you multiply those two together, and that gives you a quantum volume. Um, in order to uh, make this a little bit of a harder metric to game, we actually take um, the minimum of the two, so the minimum of the uh, of the number of qubits and the and the depth of the circuit that you can that you can implement and square that, and that gives you a, a metric that uh, shows that really the importance is in both having a large number of qubits and a very low error rate.